Hello, my friends, David Kessler here, and welcome back to the studio. Today, I want to answer a question that I get from a lot of workshop students. And that question is, how do we deal with neutral colors, or how do we make neutral colors? And first, maybe we need to define what we mean by neutral colors. For me, neutral colors don't mean burnt umber and burnt sienna and, you know, raw umber and raw sienna and all that. Those aren't neutral colors. Neutral colors are those that are neutralized by mixing two colors together. And typically, we'll use complementary colors mixed together to form neutralized colors. Now, complementary colors are amazing and one of the most common color combinations that you're going to see. If you look at paintings all around you, if you go to galleries, you go to museums, you're going to see a lot of paintings that are complementary color schemes. Um, one of the most common, one of the easiest, because we're only talking about two color families that are directly opposite each other on the color wheel. Now, they accent each other when they're used in close proximity in a painting, but when mixed together, they neutralize each other. Meaning that when they come together, depending on the amount of each that is mixed together, they begin to make gray. So neutralized colors are the ones that tend toward gray. See, when a color comes out of the tube, it's the most intense that it's going to be. And a lot of people uh, don't use a color right out of the tube. Now for me, I do a lot of neutralizing in colors before um, I start using them in a painting. I'll put a lot of colors out on the palette and I'll work with those colors a little bit in some mixing before I get them to the canvas. Uh, students have the tendency to just take what's in the, color, in the tube, squirt it out and use that on the canvas with no modification. And while you can do that, it doesn't give you a lot of variation uh, in value or color that you can get if you approach it in a different way. So we're, today we're going to look at a simple com a complementary color combination of red and green. And we're going to see how they begin to neutralize each other as you put more of one color into it uh, to get to kind of a, uh, a one, one stage, a second stage, and then a completely neutral color mixed between the two. Okay, so let's get to it. All right, here's what we're gonna look at today. We're gonna look at a simple mixture of red and green together. We're gonna use two typical colors that most of us probably have in our arsenal of colors, cad red, medium, and permanent green. So what I'm gonna to attempt to show you today is that if you take the red and add just a bit of green to it, you get one level of neutralization. A little bit more green, you get another level. And then finally, if we mix them 50-50, what does that look like as a complete neutral gray mixture? And I'm going to do the same thing with the green, okay? So let's get started with the red. I'll pull a little bit of red paint out here and get just a little bit of green on the end. Now I've got my white paint because I'm going to use that to lighten the value so we can see the color a little bit better. Oh yeah, babe, look at that. All right. So that's our first level of neutralization. You can see when the color comes out of the tube, how bright it is. And with, add, with the addition of just a little bit of green, how it knocks the color back from that to this. All right, so let's keep, let's keep going. I'm gonna add a little bit more green this time. I'm gonna add a little more white so we can actually see the color. Now the attempt here is to make sure you can see the color change and how much more neutral this is getting while still remaining a warm value. See, now we've, got, we've gone from bright to more neutralized to more neutralized yet. Now, if, let's try to mix these equally, red and green. That's pretty close to even mixture between, between the two colors. All right, so we get a little bit neutralized, more neutralized until we get to much closer to a 50-50 mix of our two colors. Do the same thing with our green. Let's take our green mixture, 
Take a little, just a little bit of red. Add some white so we can actually see the color. Now, we have, our, we have our first level of neutralization there. All right, let's keep going. A little more green out. A little more red this time. Got to have some white because I can't see what that color looks like. Here we go. Now we get our kind of our third level, right? And out of the tube, a little bit of red added, more red added. So now look at these beautiful ranges of color that we have. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing. Try to mix these equally with the red and the green. Now we're looking at pretty much a pure mixture of red and green. Now ideally these two would be the same if I was a little bit better mixing my colors these two would be identical but you can see these remain warm when we have more warm color than cool these remain warm mixtures when we have more cool than warm then we have these mixtures that remain cool and you know you can experiment with all of these so, okay, what if I added, you know, more white? Well, what if I took that and added this mixture and added more white? You see, that's a lighter value. And we can get it certainly lighter than that. Look how beautiful that is. See then, without ever buying gray out of the jar, you can make your own grays. Now look at this, look how beautiful this is. Still cool mixtures, right, that tend more toward green than toward red. But you can get them any kind of value you want just by neutralizing the color. So the next time you want to paint with complementary colors, Instead of simply using the colors right out of the tube uh, at their most intense level, try mixing them together a little bit at a time and then a lot at a time to see what kind of beautiful range of color and value that you can get by mixing the two together. Now remember, when you mix them equally, right, you're going to get a neutral gray. But in some parts of your painting, you might want that as a kind of a quiet place or a place of stillness, a place that uh, doesn't command a lot of attention, that lets the more intense colors, more toward your centers of interest, play off each other. Okay, so if you haven't done this before, give it a try on your next painting and see how that works for you. If you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, we go over all this in the workshops that I teach all across the U.S. I'll put a link to my website, davidmkessler.com, below. You can find a complete list of workshops that I teach uh, there. Please join me for one. I'd like to get to know you a little bit better. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And if you think it's good quality, good information, then please share it with your friends. Hope it was helpful for you. And hope you got something out of it. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.